Hey guys, Jake here coming at you with another math lesson today. Here's the problem we're going to be going over today. I'm going to be showing you how to use Newton's method to find all the roots of this equation correct to six decimal places. So whenever you're using Newton's method, basically the point of that is to estimate roots using the derivative of some function. But that function that you need to figure out is when you have your equation of, you know, some function equal to zero. So the first thing we're going to want to do is set this equation or rework this equation so that we have all of our x's on one side and then zero on the other side. So to do that, you know, obviously we could just, uh, you know, subtract our one over to the left side and subtract our x over to the left side. And doing that is going to give us x to the fourth minus x minus one equals zero. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use this the left side of our equation here as our function and we're going to basically just apply Newton's method to that. So the place that we want to start is using the formula for Newton's method. So this is the formula for Newton's method. It basically says to find our n plus oneth estimate, we need to use these few pieces here, right? So we need to figure out our, our x sub n, first of all, which is just our nth estimate. And then we're going to subtract the result of plugging that into the original function, plugging it into the derivative, and then dividing those. And basically the idea here is that's going to get us a little bit closer to the next best estimate for the root of this equation. So I think the easiest way to do these kinds of problems is to set up a table. And we're going to figure out these pieces one by one, and then we're going to iterate through this function a bunch of, or this formula a bunch of times. And each iteration is going to get us a little bit closer to our estimate. So in this case, we want to get correct to six decimal places. So basically what that means is we want to get it to a point where the first six decimal places are the same twice in a row. And once that happens, we know that it's correct to those six decimal places. So what our table is going to have is a few pieces of information. So what we want is, first of all, our function is just going to be this left side of this equation here, right? That's just going to be our f of x. So we already know that. That's essentially given. And basically what we want our table to have is we're going to have to figure out each of these pieces. So we wanna, we're going to start with x sub n. We're also going to want to figure out f of x sub n. f prime of x sub n. And then we'll figure out this final piece, which is, you know, basically x sub n plus 1 by plugging these previous three pieces into this formula here. So the other thing that we're going to need is what our f prime of x. So to find f prime, all we have to do is take the derivative of our function f. In this case, we can do that just using the power rule. So if we just bring our 4 down in front, lower the power by 1, and then the derivative of x is 1. So our f prime is going to be 4x cubed minus 1. Our f of x is going to be x to the fourth minus x minus 1. And we want to go through this table and basically figure out each of these pieces as we iterate through. Basically, the first thing that we need to figure out is what our first estimate of this root is going to be. So we just need some sort of estimate that will get us at least kind of close to some x value that solves this equation. So just kind of looking at this equation, if we, you know, imagine plugging in zero for x, you would get negative one into this function. If you plug in one, you're going to get also negative one. If you plug in negative one for x, you're going to get positive one. So all three of those points, x equals zero, x equals one, x equals negative one, they're all kind of close to zero. So probably our roots are going to be, you know, we're going to have some roots around that area. Um, and just kind of a shortcut to double check, if you were to actually graph this equation or graph this function, you would see that it does have two, ro two roots and they're somewhat, you know, in the neighborhood of one and negative one and zero. So, um, you know, probably a good place to start would just be using x equals one as our first guess. Really, we just need to get somewhat close to, uh, to our root and this Newton's method will get us closer, you know, get us to that root. How close you start will determine how many steps it takes, but eventually you should get to the root um, in the end. So let's just start with our first estimate being x equals 1. So now we need to take that and plug it into our function f. So if we plug 1 in, we're going to get x 1 to the 4th is 1, minus 1 is 0, minus 1 is negative 1. So f of x sub n is negative 1. Then we're going to plug in 1 into our function f prime. So plugging in 1 here is going to give us 1 cubed is 1 times 4 
is four, minus one is three. So this is three. So then if we plug these three pieces into this equation, we're gonna get, for this fraction here, we would get f of x sub n, which is negative one, over three, so that's negative one third. Then we have to do one minus negative one third, which would be four thirds. Really, we should be doing this in decimal form since we are looking for this estimate accurate to six decimal places. So four thirds is just gonna be 1.333 repeating. So now we can take this as our next estimate. So 1.333333 to six decimal places. And then again, we're just gonna plug it into F, plug it into F prime, and then plug all three of these pieces into this. So I'm just gonna kind of speed through this since it's gonna be a bit repetitive. You are gonna need to use a calculator with this since we are dealing with so many decimal places. So you can see the difference between these just after, you know, between the second and the third round of doing this, the difference between these terms is already getting pretty small. So I'm guessing probably in one or two more rounds, we will see that it'll be the same down to six decimal places. So we'll keep, keep iterating through this a few more times and see what we end up with. And you can see after this time going through, we're actually going to get the same thing again. And the reason for that is this f of x sub n is extremely close to zero. So when we plug all these three pieces into this Newton's formula up here, we end up just this fraction term is basically just zero. And it doesn't make a difference here. <clears throat> or it's, you know, zero within six decimal places. So we end up getting the same thing down to six decimal places twice in a row. So, you know, since Newton's method is basically just going to get us a little bit closer to that actual root each time, we, m we must know that this is within six decimal places of the actual root, the exact root. So this got us an estimate, a very, very good estimate for one of our roots of this equation. However, there are two. There are two roots, if you remember I said that at the beginning. So the other root is a lot closer to negative one. So what we would want to do is go through this exact same process again, iterating through this formula over and over, but this time we want to start with x equals negative one. And then when we plug that into our function f, we're going to get negative one to the fourth is one, minus negative one is positive two, minus one is one. Then we're going to plug negative one into our f prime, which is gonna give us negative one cubed is negative one, times four is negative four, minus one is negative five. And then one over negative five is negative one fifth. So plugging all this back into Newton's formula up here, we're gonna get negative one minus negative one fifth, which is gonna give us negative four fifths, which is negative 0.8. So then we would say negative 0.8 is going to be our next x value. And then we're going to go through all that again. So we're going to plug in negative 0.8 into f, negative 0.8 into f prime, plug that into Newton's formula. We're going to keep going through that a bunch of times. It's going to be the exact same process that we did up here. And we're going to keep track down to six decimal places. And I'm not going to go through all those steps because it would be a bit repetitive. But if you want to give that a try by yourself, I'll tell you real quick what the answer will be. And you should end up getting negative 0 0.724492. And that would be to six decimal places. So go ahead, give that a try. And if you want some more help working through Calculus 1 problems, check out my complete Calculus 1 package. There's a link down in the description. I'll link that there so you can check that out and get more info. It's got all the tools you need to really do well in your Calc 1 class. So go check that out. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Thanks and see you next time.